My next guest is the current Combat FC Bantamweight champion, and on February 9th, he defends his title for the very first time against Matthias Silva. Joining me today, John Duma. How's it going today, John? Good, man. How are you? Can't complain. Uh, I mean, I could. I was already doing that off, <laughs> off camera anyway. Yeah, 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 we were just complaining, but whatever. <laughs> uh, so last time out, you faced Jake Pilla for the title, coming in basically in the, let's just call it enemy territory. Jake yeah. has been with the promotion, was on every card besides, I think, the inaugural card. Yeah. Uh, plus, it's like in his backyard. You come in, you outweigh the noise, you beat him in the first round, you get the title. What's been going on since September? Same as usual, man. Just training. Like, you know, I never really stop. I, like, I guess I guess you could say I have a fight camps, but, like, my schedule is usually the same all year round. So, it's been training and get better, uh, you know, working on certain things and coming time, to, coming time for the next one. Awesome. And then you you return to the same arena, same location. Yeah. This time with the belt instead of you know the belts up in the air. Um, do you expect a more neutral crowd here? Because you know, you're not fighting the hometown kid, your opponent's from Brazil. And yeah. at that point you have like the US versus Brazil mentality in play. Yeah, I mean, you know, I like to think uh I won the hearts of, of those fans up there. I hope so. And we'll see what it's like going back. Um but you know, like Jake was awesome about it. All of his, all of his, his people, all of his fans were pretty cool. So uh, hopefully, you know, if they stick around, then uh, then they'll work for me this one. Yeah, I know. Uh, big thing there was definitely, you know, experience versus inexperience. He had, I think, four fights at the time. I think you had seven wins already at the time. Yeah, well, I was wins. just seven four. Yeah, yeah, bounced around a lot. And, uh, you know, and speaking of bouncing around then, too, like, you know, you've been through CES, you've been through Bellator, you did a few combat zones, I believe, and then even mm -hmm. uh, CFC. Yes. What led you to combat FC? Well, so first, when they just started back up, uh, Joe Cav contacted me right away, said, we'd love to have you on any card. Um, I just, I had a hurt hand at that time, like off another fight. Or stitches, something, something's going on with me. So I couldn't do that card. And then just my schedule never really matched up. But I always wanted to do it. I think it's a big deal that they're on Fight Pass. Um, and they just, they seem like a good, honest bunch of guys that are, that are coming up and doing things the right way. And uh, that's, you know, that's the kind of company I'd like to, to support. Also, and you know, being in support, you know, you've been with the same gym since like, the start of your career too. So yeah. you don't see that a lot. You usually see someone like start at one and then bounce around as they move around. Uh, were you at, you know, what led you to try force and, you know, or the sport itself? Let's do both questions. Uh, so originally the sport itself, um, I was, when I really like got into it, I was a sophomore in high school. It was me and my dad, or my whole family was going on vacation and uh, we had some time in between flights and my dad picked up Forrest Griffin's book. Uh, got fight and dude I read that whole thing and it was like like this is what I need to be doing like this is the coolest thing ever I kind of related to it from wrestling um so I knew like I wanted to finish my wrestling seat like career out in high school um so I didn't want to get into it then uh and then you know when I was 18 done with wrestling I I moved up here uh I moved up here originally to go to tech school um and then said you know it's probably time to start fighting found triforce just off you know online they were the first one uh i looked up when i googled <laughs> googled uh mma gyms in rhode island and uh that was it you know I, I connected with pete jeffrey right away he's became like one of my dads you know he he actually officiated my marriage um so uh you know it's just that's just become family awesome and for this like particular camp as well have you been just at triforce i've kind of know one answer because i've seen a post earlier today but have um, you yeah. else? i always so for my whole career i've always bounced around uh lozons um those guys have just been there forever it's joe lozons is a great guy he always invites me in um so i definitely get work up there and then uh we have some stuff with uh like on saturday sometimes we'll train down in um lewis felix's gym slash uh iron faith in rhode island um they, uh, you know, we just get a bunch of guys together and, and use the wrestling mats over there and, and set up some sparring. It was real good for the Jake Pillar camp because I could kind of keep things contained. I know, you know, Jake was a lo another local guy, so I didn't want to bounce around too much and, 
and give away too many of my secrets. I was working on a lot of new stuff for that fight. So uh, I've been doing a lot of work over there, just keeping things quiet and then, you know, training with those guys up at Lozon's that like I always have. Nice. But, and hopefully this doesn't like ruin any game plan or, you know, if it does touch on game plan, don't answer it. Um, the fight, the pillow fight only lasted, I think it was like four minutes. It was the first round. What, yeah. were, what were you working on that you didn't get to show off? Um, well, I mean, I uh, just like correcting the mistakes I made from the, the fight before, you know, I've, <laughs> I've, I've tried, trusted my boxing and like just my toughness and my will for so long, um, that I figured like, you know, it, I could kind of like plant a little bit and keep stay where I am and, and, uh, you know, not move around too much and still win fights, which, you know, works for most guys. But, um, you know, once you start hitting that top tier, you got to start changing things up, moving around a little bit differently than everybody else. So, uh, just, you know, it's just little, little details really. Nice. And then you know, your opponent, Matthias Silva, um, he's one of the rare ones who, you know, started in, or most likely started in BJJ, came in the MMA, has now done karate combat, but is now returning. It seems to be karate combat. Once you go there, you kind of hang yeah. around. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't really know a whole lot about this guy's, you know, or his backstory. I think a lot of his fights were up in Brazil or out in Brazil. Um, so, I, you know, I don't, I don't even really think he speaks English too much. So uh, it's not like I could talk to him about it. That's been the hardest part. Trying, I, I I try to bring in some questions about the opponent and yeah. regional Bra Brazil regional MMA is not U.S. regional or Canada no. regional or U.K. regional. Like it's just it's it's a very different thing. Um, and I I don't know. Like I I just don't really understand it. So it's hard. It's luckily he's he's had this fight. You know he's had those karate combat fights. And he had that fight with uh, Chris Matino back in, I want to say, July uh, that I was at. So um, I do have some some information on him. But uh, trying to get through these, like, <laughs> get these Brazilian videos is tough, man. So, like, when you're game planning for him, then, are you basing it off of, like, karate combat and what you yeah. saw in the fight with Chris? Or, like, how are you actually game planning for an opponent who good luck finding video on? Yeah, that's, um, you know, I think Chris was his most recent fight. So obviously that's been, uh, that's been a big fight that we've been watching and trying to pick details out of, but you know, you watch enough, he's got a lot of karate combat footage out there. So you can kind of figure out his tells and, you know, certain stuff like that and get to know him a little bit better, even though it's not really MMA. Awesome. And then, you know, a win here does take him to nine to four. You are managed <laughs> by top game management. So under Tyson who obviously yep. has connections everywhere because um, I'll say it so no one else has to. He's not a slime bag like most no. other managers. He actually yeah. gives a fuck about you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, he's he's the man. Um, where do you see this, like, a win here taking you? Like, does this get you to a contender series or one more regional yeah. defense? Uh, I hope, I, you know, contender series or a short notice um, UFC fight would be – that's ideal. You know, right now the, the main goal and the main focus is trying to get into the UFC. So just, you know, from here on out, I'm just going to do the things that I have to do to get there. And, and hopefully, um, you know, I, I have faith that, uh, you know, my career is in the hands of the right people. So um, I'm just going to do what I have to do on my end and I'm going to let them do what they got to do on their end. Awesome. And then, you know, in the rare times that you're not in the gym, what are you doing outside of MMA as a umbrella? Uh, so I work as a diesel mechanic and then I have like a serious addiction to, to saltwater striped bass fishing. So, uh, that's pretty much it. And then I, you know, I'm married, so I hang out with my wife, uh, like especially a lot this time of year, it's not much else to do. So, uh, that's it, man. I got a, I got a full schedule though. I'm, I'm busy all the time. Awesome. And then this is my favorite part of the interview. Cause I don't have to say shit. <laughs> I passed the mic to you. This is like your time to kind of shout out your, you know, your, your, uh, sponsors, teammates, management, social media, whatever you need to get off your chest. This is your kind of like time to go free. Yeah. So first and foremost, um, Triforce MMA, everybody over there. Uh, that's my family. That's my home. Uh, 
you know, like I said, Pete Jeffrey, the head coach, the owner, he's, he's like my dad. Um, big shout out to them. Big shout out to my boxing coach, coach Vic. He's like another one of my dads. He, uh, you know, he's there every step of the way. He's so committed. Um, doesn't ask for anything. He's just, he's the man. There's not a lot of people like him. Um, you know, shout out to, um, uh, to team turbo sports with, uh, Ross Levine and uh, Trisha Cornell, who handles my nutrition, they've been, you know, for the past couple fights, they've been a staple. And then uh, just want to shout out um, Star Waste Systems and uh, Patsy Sperduto. They've, uh, that's that's who I work for. Patsy, you know, he, he makes a lot of this possible, um, you know, by helping me out with my work, with sponsorship, with, uh, you know, just allowing me to have, to have the schedule to make all this stuff possible. So, I, you know, I, I couldn't do it without him. Um, and then uh, one more sponsor, Andiamo Gear. Uh, this kid, Vinny Tedesco, makes some of the best grappling MMA gear you want. Um, you know, check them out. They, uh, he's an awesome guy. You know, he's uh, just a real genuine dude. So if, if you need some stuff, definitely check those guys out. Can't forget Top Game. Uh, you know, they've they've been with for, been with me for a long time. Uh, set up countless fights for me. So. Uh, Tyson and those guys are, you know, they're uh, been a big part of the team too. Awesome. Yeah, because like I said, it, it helps having a, a manager who cares about his fighters. Um, yeah, I just just caught an interview of him actually, who even you know uh, ran kind of how he runs things. He wants yeah. he wants to not be mad if you call him for something. Yeah, um, yeah. It's versus he, just know, looking he, at a number. Yeah, he's like a friend. You know, it's uh. It's easy to get in contact with him. I just, you know, if I need something, I hit him up like a buddy. So uh, it's definitely having that kind of relationship uh, with our manager is, is, I think, a big key, especially nowadays. And uh, so February 9th, you are on UFC Fight Pass. Uh, Combat FC makes a return with this card. Last one, I think, was on like Fight TV. It was. Um, you were against Matthias Silva, who, if people want to check him out, Karate Combat is probably the best way to look that up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's got some, you know, he's he's a pretty exciting fighter. He's got some highlight knockouts. Um, I think it should be a good match, a good title fight, you know, and and hopefully we'll come out with a win and and uh, you know it'll it'll look good on my resume. Yeah, you know, title defense. I think there's also another, at least one or two other titles on this card as well. Two. Yeah, and I'm lucky I'm the first one. Man, I would hate to be the the last title fight because then you got to wait those two twenty five minute fights. Oh, that's brutal. And Combat FC is good; they run everything pretty smooth. Like everything's always on time, so should be an early night for me, which is nice. I like that. Yeah. So, as of now, three title fights. Uh, yes, so, sir. I mean, I know February 9th is like a huge fight pass night as well. Um, I know like every promotion is pretty much doing a card that night. Awesome. Yeah. So. Yeah, so check them all out. That'll be perfect. You know, you can check all the fights out at the same time. Um, yeah, so check out uh, John, Comet FC. He fights February 9th in the first of three title fights. Tickets still available on your end? I still have tickets available. So uh, All right, so I post yeah. these pretty fast, so I'll put a link down below. Um, is it they DM you? D-O-U-M-A. For... Do, do they like, message you? How do they get tickets? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just hit me up on Instagram. I'll eventually find it. <laughs> I'll find no. it. I'll, I'll find it before the fight happens. I'll get you your tickets. If you're local, I'll put the link down below. Reach out to John. Get yourself a ticket. Um, support regional MMA, especially someone like Joe, Joe Cav, and all those guys up north. I, absolutely, these guys are the, are the building blocks of the UFC. You know, uh, without without us, the UFC could never happen. So uh, you, know, you gotta invest your time. Awesome, and best of skill in the ninth. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks man. Appreciate it.